Ghosts of the Spirit by Chrissy Gold. Chapter 1 She walked into her house and dropped her back at a door. She was tired and worn out. She grabbed a can of peach soda out of the fridge before making the trek up from the stairs to her room. She plopped down on her bed with a sigh. She pulled the hair bows out of her hair as she sat the soda on the nightstand. She kicked off her shoes and rubbed her aching feet. I hate heels, she moaned as she rolled over on the bed and wrapped a soft blanket around her body. Her eyes widened as she jerked up. Once that, she rushed to the window and threw open the door like panels before hopping up on the bench. She squinted up the window off at, at the bright object falling forward her. Before her mind could register what was happening, it hit her square in the chest. The force of it flung her body back into the room. She hit the floor with a loud thud. She woke up to the sound of cricket. She moaned as she slowly stretched her sore muscles. She sat up and shuffled her full body to the window. She pushed it closed and locked it. What a hit me, she murmured as she pressed the switch by the window. The room exploded with light, and she looked around on the floor for the offending object. Green eyes widened as she spotted dry blood on the floor. Where did she clutched her arms around her body and froze and she heard her clothes crunch? There was dry blood in the center of her shirt as well as a hole. The edges of the hole were singed. Her exposed skin was redder than normal, but otherwise seemed fine. Aside from the fading zigzag line going through her chest, I must be going crazy. She began gathering clean clothes. Maybe all those sleepless nights were finally catching up with her. A good long, a good long shower will, will wash the crazy away. She blocked her clothes down the wall. On the water closet, she kicked the door closed with her foot and turned the lock. Oh, you're okay. She froze as she heard a faint whisper. <laughs> Shelly looked around inquisitively. Seeing no one around and hearing nothing else, she shook her head. Must be hearing things. She turned on the shower and adjusted the temperature. She sighed as the warm water hit her skin. She was halfway done washing when she heard a struggling noise. Darn, why can't I ever do this right? She heard a muffled cry. She snatched the shower curtain back and screamed, Oh my lord, what? Bang. Oh, the voice moaned. <laughs> Shelly crouched down the tub. I'm going crazy. I've become delusional. Why is it water washing away the crazy? After a few minutes of hysteria, from both parties. Shelly took a deep breath. She walked over to the person whose upper half was stuck through her bathroom door. Her eyes widened as she noticed that her door was just as it all was then with no damage at all. A ghost? She breathed in awe. The man stuck in the door froze. You can see the voice was near a squeak. After a moment, he resumed his struggle again. Why can't I face his shoulders, Slump? Can you give me a hand, please? <laughs> Shelly stared at him in awe for a moment before the gears in her brain began to turn. She wrapped her arms around his waist. On three out four. You push yourself back. Got it? You got it. She nodded as she began counting. She heard a, she gave a hard tug and he popped out. They felt to the floor of the Thank you very much, Miss Shelley. He stood up as he dusted off his pants. My apologies. You know, he swirled around on his heels. He coughed into his hand as he stood like a soldier. My greatest apologies for this is honor. I shall show my wretched so out. He reached for the door and I'm only to have his hand go through it. He glared at him. Oh, now I can face through things. <laughs> Shelley giggled as she wrapped the towel around her. By you're a silly ghost, she commented. Not at all scary like the ghost in movies. Your name wouldn't happen to be Casper, would it? He glanced at her and shook his head. No. Then what is it? You already seem to know my name. Pardon me, Miss Shelley, but 
Now is not the proper time for introductions. No, if I may, I would see, leave you to your bath. He's staring hard at the door now. Oh, let me get that for you. Shall we open the door? <laughs> Are you still going to be here later? Why, of course, me, Shelly. This is my home. He replies, you walk out of the bathroom. Oh, okay. Where can I find you when I get out? I shall await your arrival in the kitchen. He stayed halfway down the stairs. She not even returned to her show. She laughed for a few minutes as she watched. What a nice ghost. She laughed and froze. A ghost. I just want a ghost. Holy shit. I've gone crazy. Shelly slowly walked down the stairs. Her green eyes cautiously... And curiously peered into the kitchen. She wished she could see all the kitchen from the stairs before she walked in. She scanned the room and froze as she saw the ghost from earlier. This time he was stuck in the count a box of tea in his hands. He looked up at her and gave a nervous laugh. Well, this is embarrassing. I'm sensing a pat and Shelly walked over to him and helped him out of the counter. Thank you, he nodded nervously. He handed over the box of tea. Would you like some tea? Nah, she accepted the box and placed it and plopped it onto the counter. Would you like some soda? He looked down at himself and up with a little arch, an arch eyebrow. I'm good, he sounded almost more cool. Shall we talk? He just went to the table. Sure, Shelly put two cans on the table. My name is Shelly Shuey, but you already seem to know that. What's your name? I am Alphonse J.P. Dodgenberg. He saluted as he carefully sat down. My pardons were earlier. It's okay. She nodded as she took a sip of her soda. So, why are you a ghost, or... So, are you a ghost, or am I just going crazy? Well, considering I've lived here since the war, and you've only been here a few years, I'm pretty sure I'm a ghost, and your sanity is still intact. Let's get to know. So, can I ask you some questions, Alphonse? He nods sol- solemnly, his fish clenching on the table, his stomach felt nervous. Would she ask him to leave his home? Would she forcibly exercise him? This was his home. He'd lived here for years. He didn't want to leave. It was all he had left. Why are you a ghost, Alphonse? She asked after a deep breath. Alphonse's eyes went wide at the question. Why am I... Ghost, he repeated the question. He wasn't exactly sure if he understood what he said, what she said. When she nodded and gestured for him to continue, he tapped his fingers on the table as he sat up straight trying to remember. I'm not really sure, he admitted guiltfully. I mean, I remember most of my life. I own this house. It was my family's home for three generations. I had a good life. The war was hard on all of us, but I got by all right. Nothing to become a ghost over. What about your dad? She took note of how he finished at the question. It's fuzzy. He tapped all piano lessons on the table as he spoke softly. I remember there being a loud knocking at the door. It was a holiday weekend because I sent alcohol on hand due to her niece, Edith. So I had to answer it. From there, I'm not exactly sure what happened afterwards. It's all so disjointed. I used to remember waking up to Edith calling me. I tried talking to her. I even tried grabbing her hand and telling her I was right in front of her. But she just couldn't see me. I took about a week. It took me about a week to realize I was a ghost. Hmm. Shelly thought of over this. He took a sip. She took a sip of her soda and stared intensely at the dirty blonde in front of her. He felt the awkward stare and glanced around the room. He took a gulp. Are you going to ask me to leave? He whispered. He didn't like waiting for bad news. He knew it was coming. So he moved back into the world. I can't just say it simply. Coffin tilted his head in confusion. She giggled. He looked like a confused child. Well, that would be rude. You've lived here for years. I've only been here for two. We've been rooming for two years. So I don't see why we can't continue to be now, she said. But we need to set down some graphics. Okay, Alphonse nodded. First things first. No walking into others into the others room without the others' permission. Then I've gone here. What room is yours? Alphonse thought for a moment. The room when I was alive used to be the one beside the bathroom. 
But over the years, so many people have moved in or out of there that I just kind of wander around the house. Well, not anymore. Shelly stood up and walked up the stairs. She swung open the door and surveyed the room. There was a small point mattress by the window. There was a trunk under the window. She had made this to guess from where her mother nagged her until she allowed it to spend a weekend with her. She tore her sheets off. Alphonse wouldn't want to sleep on the same sheets her mother slept on. She dragged the sheets off to the laundry room. She opened the closet where she kept extra sheets and bedding. Hey, Alphonse, she turned and noticed that the ghost wasn't around Alphonse. Alphonse, where are you? What are you doing? He asked as he came around the corner. Getting sheets for your bed. For your bed. I want you to have somewhere. Have some somewhere. She answered. I think I will put all of my belongings down to sell it. I'm not sure if they're still there, though. We'll have a look-see tomorrow. It's rather late. Now, which sheets do you want on your bed? He scanned over the assortment of them. Those right there will do. Let me get them up. They're a bit high up. He stated as he carefully stretched up and grabbed the dark indigo sheets. There you go, he said as he flattened his feet on the floor. You didn't even get stuck in any thing, shall we know that Why is that? I'll find short as they walk to his room. I'm not sure why, but I can interact with things the same as when I was alive. I can face through objects to a point, but I get stuck. I try not to face, but it kind of freaks people out if they see doors opening and closing by themselves. I nearly gave one poor lady a heart attack when she caught me tending to the garden. New garden? A little bit. Mrs. Hoggle was sick of a bad bug, but she loved her flowers. I couldn't wash them well, so I decided to help. One day, though, she came out and saw me, or, well, floating gardening tools, and ran off screaming to barf. I felt so bad for scaring the poor thing. She giggled as she imagined what poor Mrs. Hollis saw and how she ran away. She would certainly have to keep her mom from visiting and seeing things moving around on their own. Living without ponds was going to be interesting. And that is the end of Chapter 2. I hope you all enjoyed that. Thank you for listening. Bye.